Um, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, I showed you before a, um, a set of exercises. These are model conceptualization exercises. And I'm asking you to struggle here with um, trying to think through what are the purposes, if, if you come with a, a plan for a model, what are the purposes you'd like to use uh, for that? Let me, let me get this thing out of the way. The palette is encroaching on my visual area. Um, uh, what's, what are you trying to accomplish with the model? Maybe the model is aimed to answer a research question. Um, what, what Jeff tells me, Barry Richmond, um, a uh, popularizer um, at some, uh, with, uh, who overcame many obstacles, human and otherwise, and computational, to popularize aspects of system dynamics, he called it the focal question. Is there some key question that you're trying to, to, to sort of characterize? Um, if not, are the primary goals of the model? Is your model designed to, um, to ask some questions about interventions? Which intervention, for example, is best? Is, it, is, it, is the model designed to build, trying to bring consensus to a group discussion of, of how the different pieces of the system relate to one another? What are, the, what are the goals you're trying to accomplish? Are you trying to assess the, um, uh, the relative levels of priority for acquiring certain types of data to inform the model through a sensitivity analysis? Are you trying to explain trends? I want you to think this through, because it's, it's important. And even if you hope for a couple, a, a couple types of purposes, you want to, as, as Barry uh, understood said it, you want to put your stake in with one or two of those foremost, okay? Um, secondly, um, I, I refer you to a hallmarks of complex systems um, to identify features of complex systems that are relevant to what you're trying to accomplish or you're the features of the system. Um, um, things that are important features that you have to grapple with. If, if you have trouble articulating these, we'll work with you tomorrow to try to explicate your situation, to find if it need questions like this do come to the fore. Are there aspects of cues in their buildup and the need to reason about the time, uh, the waiting time? Or are there aspects of feedbacks or, or um, tipping points that you want to point to? Any of these would be, would be valid. Um, and I want you to think through what is it that, that recommends the use of system science approaches? Um, what level of understanding or evidence, what levels of qualitative or quantitative uh, evidences or understanding that you could bring to bear? Qualitative knowledge, like the phenomenology of a system. Physicists um, such as who taught Kurt speak about the phenomenology of the system, sort of qualitative behavior. We may not have exact quantitative data, but we know that the system oscillates. Um, and it oscillates more at certain time at, at certain times of the year than others, or we know uh, it exhibits sudden transitions from one state to the other that are then persistent. Those may be phenomenological observations we want to we want to explore. Those are useful. Those are aspects of understanding of the system. In other cases, we may have data, perhaps cross-sectional aggregate data, such as we might get from the CCHS here in Canada or we might get from the, uh, the NHIS or NHANES in the States. Maybe we have longitudinal aggregate data, aggregate data over time. Maybe cross-sectional individual data or longitudinal individual data. Excuse me, I should have said cross-sectional individual data would be like those from the large-scale survey instruments. Um, maybe we have a longitudinal surveys that follow individuals over time, which are like gold for dynamic modeling at an individual level. Are there particular data points from the literature? At le what level are they articulated? Um, modeling is best considered incrementally. And if we think about the initial model, are there some things that you feel really need to be endogenous, some things endogenous and ignore? Try to be parsimonious and ask what a minimal thing would be. Often students end up putting more in and will work with you to try to, to sculpt a more um, parsimonious model for your very first foray. Um, and then finally, simulation models depict dynamic hypotheses involving the causal structure of the system, okay? And we think about pathways of influence, mechanisms. We think about a mechanistic model, a model which posits certain causal connections. 
We saw that earlier. Remember with those obesity outcomes and moving to a mixed income neighborhood? There might be certain pathways that move through access to greater food availability through fresh fruits and vegetables and grocery stores in the new neighborhood. Others work through neighborhood walkability or aspects of ac uh, access to recreational resources. Um, when we're thinking through outcomes, it's not enough in dynamic modeling to just say, well, this is associated with that. We want to think about posit why, as, at least as a working hypothesis, why it might be associated with it. We want to map out a system in a, in a mechanistic level. So I ask you to think about some reasons. These are things related to my to those slides I gave earlier. If you're focused on interventions, what do we need to characterize the, the outcomes of those interventions? Uh, if you're trying to understand key outputs, what pathways have to be represented to capture those outputs? Or for essential dynamics? Or if you're dealing with service delivery, as Scott said, often we don't deal with causal loop diagrams. But what are some key steps within that work that you need to map out and think about? Um, the language you use will be different. If you're aspiring to an aggregate model, say with cis money, so we might use causal diagrams, maybe stocks and flows, to make it sharper. If we're using agent-based models, we'll often use this, um, this uh, format here where we think about outputs of the model that are needed, parameters, pre-specified assumptions about individuals, actions that that change the state of those individuals, rules that govern when those actions apply. So maybe a person, uh, for example, um, their, their mortality, the chance of them dying, that's a state change, depends, for example, um, in some way on their age. And so there's a rule linking up their age to their, to their mortality outcome. We want to think about time. Um, uh, how long is the time frame of the model, and is it discrete or continuous? What interventions would be considered? What aspects of the environment are absolutely needed to characterize uh, the dynamics we're which to interest it? Is it networks? Is it space, but not in a geographic way? Or is it geographic space? Um, and then what aspects of state for the agents involved or for the model more generally need to be captured? Do we need to capture state in the form of seasons over time? Do we need to capture the states of agents as they evolve over time? Maybe diabetes and weight changes are, have bought, got to both be captured as states of the agent that evolve over time. Um, so if you could think through these aspects of your model, uh, that would be good. Um, and, um, you know, I, I ask you to think about using these state charts we saw today, causal links. Uh, we'll see events tomorrow or variables um, to sort of capture aspects. And then discrete event modeling, I ask you to think through what resources are there, what actors there are with agency um, that might, might govern the, that progression. And then what services or cues um, dependence on resources, sources, and sinks are required. Things that from which entities come and to which they go. So that's for discrete event modeling. So each, each component has somewhat different paradigms. And if you want to mix them, great. You can describe continuous dynamics with system dynamics. And you can describe um, d uh, uh, categorical dynamics with state charts, for example. I'd ask you to get started on this. And we'll work with you tomorrow to try to explicate this further. This will involve struggle. This will involve difficulties. This will involve TA consultations. And this will involve key use of a logical knife to try to cut away, cut down to, to what it is you're really most interested in. So you can arrive at, although it's work here, it'll spare you a lot of work in building that first version of the model to be clear about this. OK? So I'd ask you to undertake that. Some of you may want to come in tomorrow, grab a TA, and repair to a, uh, a room um, first thing and start work on your model. That's great. I have listed here, and I would remind you of this. There's this di there's this um, this uh, uh, projects document linked to here, and within this projects document, I've listed the different projects within this within this uh, boot camp stakeholders. Uh, a brief project name, 
lead TA taking, um, taking a role, and then some description of it. Um, I've tried to as uh, assign particular stakeholders here. Um, I think I'll, uh, I'll assign Alex to this one. Alex, do you want to raise your hand? Kurt, raise your hand for the first one. Um, uh, Young Chen, raise your hand. Um, so this would be contaminant, fate, and transport with Winchell doing some consultation. Um, uh, uh, systems resilience, end of life care. Um, uh, is this uh, Roberto? Did you put that down? Oh, you didn't. Okay. Um, uh, the, the concept is a familiar one. I recall down under you asking me about resilience oh, and, yes. and end of life issues. But who put down systems res resilience and end of life care as a goal of a model? I'm interested in that one, but I also want to go with Michael. And the okay. Did anyone else put that down? Okay. So, um, so it may be that you want to work with that would um, that would help us. And I have asked. Um, for, if we could consolidate that, because we do have a limited number of extraordinary TAs. I've asked Wade. Wade, is, is Wade in the, in the room? Wade is here. Uh, I believe you're already familiar with this extraordinary young man. Um, and uh, he will work with you. We can also work on the dynamic, on the procedures model. Okay, okay, that's, that's great. Uh, Wade, um, uh, Wade will assist you. Uh, with those models. His skills are, uh, are recommended both by breadth and depth. Um, okay, um, uh, next one down is a uh, dengue virus transmission model. Who's, who suggested that? Very good. Um, and your name again? John. Uh, John. Um, uh, I have asked uh, for that. Uh, uh, Aiden, is Aiden here? Aiden stands at the door. Um, uh, and Rifat, Rifat's over there. I've asked them to help out with this dengue virus transmission model. Each of them brings significant uh, knowledge to bear. Um, uh, and oh, we've got a we, we've got a uh, a challenge here. Okay, we're going to have to uh, figure out. Um, I may ask Scott. Okay, um, we're we're going to have to. We're gonna have to broker this. I need to, to think about with Michael, because uh, Alex can also be useful for the Dana model. Where's Dana? Dana? Okay, okay but Cheryl, you, you, you're associated with her. Um, so we can work with that. Okay, um, uh, Okay. emergency department, uh, Wade, Wade is, is assigned to that. Um, discrete event ED model. Okay, great. Is it Patricia? Yeah. Okay, so uh, I've asked Scott to help out with this. Scott is gone for the day, but will be back tomorrow morning. And uh, he can take a lead. He's just now finishing up this very week in a rich ED model um, related to dynamics of the ED and its interrelationships with um, spread of drug resistance. Um, and sort of outbreaks of uh, sort of an MRSA type um, type uh, outbreak. Um, he has a lot of experience with ED modeling. I would also note that Jeff here is recommended by considerable knowledge about that. We're going to have a guest lecture on ED modeling. Well, on, on weights in the ED and their linkage system-wide issues on Wednesday by uh, two individuals for leading efforts for a Ministry of Health on that subject Wednesday afternoon. Uh, Kurt, back there, has also done considerable work with ED modeling. Um, and my recommendation is that you might want to also talk with Roberto and Michael. Michael, of whom, if I'm not, uh, if I'm not uh, mistaken, is an ED physician working in the ED. Um, so, um, I, we have a, a, a breadth of resources there that we could bring to bear to try to focus on your question from modeling strengths to, to past models to ongoing projects, et cetera. And Scott's offered to take a lead for that, okay? Um, uh, uh, Scott uh, 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 was here earlier with a, with a T-shirt 
um, a white t-shirt that was emblazoned by the any logic name. Um, uh, Tina, Tina, Tina's in the back there. I've asked her to try to work with Clara on, on the dynamics of Ketabu, uh population. Um, and uh, uh, I noted on um, Clara, if you could be acquainted with Maria, who just finished a PhD thesis on mule deer dynamics, ideally suited to inform an agent-based simulation model. Uh, I've never seen such a rich data set acquired through 900 hours of in-field observation of actual deer in all seasons of the year here in Saskatchewan. But Cheryl over there is a formidable knowledge source when it comes to the same, and she served as Maria's supervisor. Both of them come from Western College of Veterinary Medicine and bring a formidable set of knowledge about ungulate behavior um, acquired through, through uh, uh, great efforts um, of direct observation. And I believe, um, although my knowledge of cervid behavior is, uh, is limited, um, uh, there, there may be some points of understanding that could flow back and forth, particularly about certain modeling questions. Uh, Cheryl and I have been on a journey together uh, involving modeling of deer behavior and deer, um, uh, deer um, uh, evolution and health status. And um, it's been a journey of learning. Um, and we have- going to finish this summer. <laughs> and, there's many components of it underway that, that needs to be finished uh, this summer um, uh, within the next uh, week and a half um, for it to be a success. And we are committed to doing that. And this week we will bring considerable modeling expertise to bear to, to get it past the finish line, um, including the efforts um, of, of one windchill um, uh, who's a rainmaker on his own. So um, uh, I, I will say that Tina will do some learning. Tina will help with Clara, but Tina can also benefit some from some of Winchell's work um, in looking at these models. Um, uh, service dog interactions. Um, I'd like to see, um, oops, um, oh, oh, okay. Um, uh, service dog interactions, Nell will be uh, working on that. Um, she may have had to leave for the day here. Finally, um, disease spread in arming, uh, an animal farming system. Um, is this, Cheryl, is this your work? Or is, oh, okay, great. Um, Gabrielle? Um, so we'll get a TA assigned to that um, uh, to, to make sure that you can be informed in this. And I'm going to have to take stock about who's assigned to what and uh, we'll make sure that you can be associated with a, with a good TA to get started in a forceful way, okay? okay? Thank you. Thank you. Um, if anyone has any concerns about this, please uh, bring those forward. Um, otherwise, um, uh, the evening is yours. Um, and uh, I will look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. I believe we start up tomorrow at 8.30. Um, I will tell you. Um, it lies, uh, <laughs> I know it may be disconcerting, but Christine is a giant resource to me. And uh, on Tuesday, we, we are starting at, here we go, Tuesday. Um, oh my gosh. Ladies and gentlemen, 9 a.m. So if you are too fried tonight to work on those problems, sometime back in after your morning run, perhaps, but before the boot camp open tomorrow, to try your hand at those questions we posed to you in that document. So 9 a.m. tomorrow, I will be here. My voice rested, and with your minds um, that have secured, um, <laughs> secured a break. Um, but we'll, we'll get started tomorrow with a bang, okay? Thank you very much. Your patience is admirable. I appreciate you bearing with the, the slings and insults uh, associated with um, some of these challenges. I will see you tomorrow morning. Well rested. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. And I will post all these videos for your perusal for those who, who 